Tata Steel reported a good set of fourth quarter earnings. Uh, my colleague Nigel D'Souza caught up with TV Narendran, who is the MD and CEO of Tata Steel, to discuss their quarter four performance and began by asking if there was any one-off in the EBITDA numbers for India as well as Europe. Listen in to what he had to say. Operationally, we were strong. I think uh, particularly the Indian operations delivered its highest ever production numbers and deliveries were also strong, higher than in Q3 because the market sentiments uh, changed quite a bit. Uh, nothing very significant, you know, in terms of one-offs up and down. There are a few which uh, in some sense cancel out each other quite a bit. Uh, we were obviously helped by the price increases in India, the volume increase in India. Uh, coal prices settled, though we've not yet fully got the benefit of uh, today's coal prices, which will come in the next quarter, not in this quarter. So that's the story as far as uh, uh, the EBITDA is concerned. In Europe, uh, well, I think we uh, the costs were actually slightly higher than what we had thought. The prices were okay. Uh, volumes were okay. But uh, as you know, we're going in for a major blast furnace relining. One of the blast furnaces is down. So we shall be back only in August. So we had guided last quarter as well that uh, the European challenges will continue for at least another quarter till our blast furnace comes back in August. All right, uh, Mr. Narendra, and you briefly mentioned about coking coal, and that's going to be the joker in the pack because that's cooled off quite a bit. Tell us what was the coal consumption cost in the past quarter, that's in quarter four, and how do you see that average in the first quarter of this new fiscal? So I'm not remembering the exact numbers of coal consumption cost, but this quarter will be about $10 higher than last quarter, consumption-wise. So the procurement may be about $25 to $30 uh, lower in this quarter, but we will get the benefit of that only in the next quarter. So that's why this quarter margins uh, will still see higher coal prices than the spot coal prices, because uh, we're getting what we bought three months back. And coal prices started dropping more in the last 30 days. Okay, so the benefit of the lower coking coal cost will actually come in in the second quarter of the fiscal, while that's, quarter one will see higher effective prices on the coal side. That's an important clarification then. So let's yeah. compare uh, pricing then. You know, in China, in the last 20 days or so, prices have come off considerably. I'm tracking the HRC prices out there. They're down between $70, $80 uh, odd. Uh, now, the street is bracing that in India as well, we could see lower prices in May. So what is your estimate? Will there be a price cut here in India? And, uh, you know, if you could uh, tell us as well, uh, what could the quantum be? I won't uh, uh, talk of the price cuts month on month, but quarter on quarter, we expect prices this quarter to be about 1,200 rupees higher than last quarter. Okay, so that's our assessment. Yes, uh, China has softened, but let's wait and see what happens uh, next week after the holidays are over. All right. Uh, could you compare then domestic prices with imported steel? What's the price as of now? The difference? So domestic prices are in that 60,000 range for HR imports. You keep hearing... Uh, you know, nothing major has come as yet. Some bookings are there. Uh, but even if something comes, it's 200,000 in a market which uh, consumes uh, 10 million a, a month, you know. So, uh, you know, so yes, it will hurt sentiment a bit. Uh, steel business is a bit sentiment driven. If people think steel prices will fall, they postpone purchases. If they think it will go up, they advance purchases. But I think we look at the fundamentals, and I think uh, the fundamentals for India are still quite strong. Uh, you know, I think pretty much auto industry, commercial vehicles are still very strong. Construction is uh, got enough auto books. If you look at uh, mm -hmm. pre-engineered buildings, they're all sitting on five, four to six months of auto loads. So I think demand is fundamentally strong. Uh, prices will reflect a little bit more international sentiment and uh, stocks of traders. But you're not giving us a difference, sir. What's the difference between domestic prices as well as imported steel? Is there a difference well, or is it pretty much... I think uh, today, if, uh, if you're exporting steel into Southeast Asia, you're, uh, you know, selling at maybe about $620, $630. If you're selling into Europe, you're higher. So, I mean, there are lots of quotes going around saying that in Southeast Asia, it's available at $620, etc. But, uh, you know, so you can do the math there and, of course, factor in the risk that you would take because you buy today, you'll get it after two, three months. So uh, so this difference is always there, right? Mm. I mean, it's nothing new. Okay. Uh, in any market, the domestic prices are at a premium to international because there's always a risk when okay. you buy international. Okay, all right. What about spot EBITDA per tonne? Now, India looks splendid. You know, Mr. Narendra and I go through all the analyst expectations on the sell side, and no one was even close to the 16,500, 16,800 rupees per tonne that you've delivered. 
So how is the spot EBITDA per ton looking in comparison to what you've delivered in the past quarter, both for India as well as for Europe? Will Europe losses be in this vicinity of around 90 to around $100 per ton for a couple of quarters more, given that you have a shutdown? And for India as well, how does it compare? So if I look at Europe, uh, we see the situation in UK improving quarter on quarter because of the fact that gas prices, electricity prices all are settling in. We do have some hedges in Europe uh, on gas prices, which helped us when gas prices went up, uh, which will take a couple of quarters to unwind uh, when gas prices go down. Uh, Netherlands, uh, will, you will not see the benefit so much because, like I said, half the production is down because the blast furnace is down. And whatever sales you're doing is using slabs which were made uh, a few months back, you know, because we had stocked up on slabs because the blast furnace shutdown was going down. So I don't see things improving very significantly in, in uh, Europe. Uh, it will not get worse. It may get marginally better, uh, but we will start seeing the benefits in Q2 rather than Q1. As far as India is concerned, spot emitters just now are, I would say, slightly lower than uh, uh, you know what we've uh, announced for a simple reason. This quarter, we've had a lot of shutdowns. We will have a lot of shutdowns. April, June is when we take a lot of our shutdowns. So if you look at it from a cost point of view, uh, the cost per ton tends to go up because you have lower volumes. The fixed cost gets apportioned over lower volumes. Mm. Coal prices are still higher. Like I said, it's about $10 higher than consumption of last quarter. Uh, so there will be those pressures. And steel prices, let's wait and see what happens in May and June. Okay. What about the negotiations with the UK government? Is there a possibility of any kind of shutdown or, uh, you know, where have those discussions reached? Well, uh, uh, the discussions are going on. I can't say that we made much progress uh, beyond what has already been covered by the media. Before we let you go, a couple of details more. Debt reduction came out of nowhere. Was that because of a working capital release, if you could tell us that? And if that yeah. is the case, then we could expect some more release in the coming quarter. Uh, yeah. g give, us, give us a broad guideline about how much lower can debt be, say, in the first quarter and for the year as well on the whole, what's the guidance? So I think for the year, we are certainly targeting a billion dollars. That has been our goal every year. We didn't meet it last year. Yeah. We did better than that in the previous years. So this year, we're back to that goal. And I think uh, we should be on track for that. If you're bidding for a new unit, uh, you know, if you're looking at inorganic growth, what is the rough number you'll be paying on a million ton basis per million ton? No, I think uh, inorganic growth, uh, we will hold on. We'll wait and see. Because like I've said before, with the existing sites, we have mm -hmm. enough... Uh, a runway to expand to 40 million tons. So right. we don't really need a new site to go to 40, 45 million tons. Right. So we will evaluate uh, yearly based on attractiveness of asset and value yeah. of the asset. You know, you know, Mr. Narendran, you normally tell me this, but then you go aggressive as well. NINL, you just picked it up out of nowhere and you've paid pretty much uh, top dollar for it. And I'm asking you about inorganic growth because NMDC steel plant is definitely on the block. Have you, well, bid, said, have you we, made some progress out there? Have you no, put in, submitted a bid? No, we haven't. For NMDC, we haven't. Nilachal was different because uh, we've always said that we were interested in long product yes. asset. Yeah. And Nilachal was a long product asset. Uh, it had 2,500 acres of land next to our existing site. Hmm. It had 150 million tons of iron ore. Uh, so we didn't value it as a 1 million ton steel plant. We valued it for its entirety. That's uh, the big corporate conversation for the day. Get